<sighs> Morning guys. I don't normally vlog in bed. In fact, I don't even know if I have ever vlogged in bed. But it's the 9th of September, so it's the day after we found out that the Queen's died. Found out yesterday, I was with Leah. I feel like it's only really hit me this morning. I've just been like scrolling through some on my phone and so oh. I've just been scrolling through social media and looking at all the posts and everything and I feel like just really sad. I know I didn't know her or anything. <laughs> and that's the weird thing, isn't it? That like you don't know someone but it's still sad. I'm so busy today, guys. I've been to the gym, been and done a little food shop and I've done some gardening and I'm just tidying up and cleaning up because my boyfriend's coming over today and Lucy's coming home as well and the cleaner hasn't been this week so I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna do it all myself. So I've put some cushion covers in the wash. As you can see the white cushions there. They're drying, I've cleaned and changed my bedding. It's just a day of jobs, plus I have some work to do. I have to reshoot a brand deal that I have at the moment, um, so I need to do that a bit later on. But before that, in the next five minutes, I've got to log on to a Zoom chat because Leah and I are being interviewed by the Preston and Steve show in Philadelphia about the passing of the Queen. So that was a really last minute thing. They reached out to us this morning, well, last night, but we were in bed saying, would you come on the show tomorrow? So it's a last minute thing. I have no idea what they're gonna ask, but just there to have a little chat. So yeah, I'm gonna get set up for that now. And then as soon as that's done, I hope it won't take too long because I've got so much stuff to do today. But yeah, then I'll have lunch. I need to walk over and my to-do list is completely full over here. Let's crack on. Hello, so I apologize for the noise. Basically my washing machine's on. I'm doing a whole bunch of washing as you can see. But I had to show you this. I nipped my PO box this morning and I've had a really special letter and delivery from Alan. So I just want to say thank you very much, Alan. Alan's written me a very long letter, which I absolutely love letters, learning about you guys. Again, towards the end of the letter, start again emotional, of course I did. And I was like, I'm not filming any of that because I feel like I've put myself online crying too much. Uh, <laughs> but Alan, just to let you know, absolutely loved your letter but Alan has included a very special gift <gasps> cooking book this is an antique cookery book and it's just stunning it's even got a message in I'm trying to work out I think this might be printed but it could be from the real person I don't know um, but it says dear sirs having used and always recommended your baking powders in my classes since 1889 I still consider it the best substitute best something for general use not sure what that is um anyway look at these so the first page look they have these gorgeous illustrations of all the stuff that you're baking here we go meat pie oh wow this is so good afternoon cakes lunch cakes princess cake birthday cake that has just made me so so happy this is the second time the first time joe bought me these antique Beatrix Potter books. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's all these antique Beatrix Potter books, a whole set of them. Which I collect Beatrix Potter books and I collect antique books as a whole. So thank you so much, Alan. This is going straight in my collection. I will keep a hold of this forever and I might even try baking some of the things from it. So thank you so, so much. That's so kind. I've also received these recipes from Choppy. Thank you so much. Who's written out all of these amazing recipes. One of them which stands out to me is a Yorkshire tea cake because my boyfriend is from Yorkshire. So I might give that a go. Thank you so much. You guys, you're gonna make me fat. This is Editor Joel jumping in to remind you that if you're not a VIP member on this channel, then consider becoming a member. It's $3.99 per month, it's less than a coffee, and you get bonus members-only videos that I post. I post about three of them a month, and you get members-only live streams as well. So we have a lot of fun over on my membership club. It's the best thing I've done this year. I have so much fun with it, and I really get to know you guys a lot more. You also get badges next to your name, so when you see people in the comments with badges next to their name, that's because they're a member. But yeah, this is just a cheeky plug to say, go do that if you would like. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen my boyfriend posted a video of me wearing glasses in an optician's because I have some glasses. Now I know that you golden oldies who've been watching me since the beginning have been like, Joel, didn't you get your eyes lasered? And yes, I did. Let me explain. I got my eyes lasered five years ago. Best thing I've ever done. I've not worn glasses or contact lenses since. And to be honest, I still don't need them. My eyesight is still really good. 
I can still read signs in the distance, number plates on cars or whatever you call them, license plates. It's still really good, except for when I'm concentrating. And interestingly, that's what the optician said. When I went to get my eyes checked, she was like, yeah, you'll probably find that you can't concentrate on like one specific detail, even though your general vision is good. And I was like, yeah. She was like, like driving. And I was like, yeah, when I'm driving, especially at night, I'm like squinting, which is a side effect of laser eye surgery. One of the downsides of laser eye surgery is that your nighttime driving vision can be a bit glary. Anyway, she was like, I advise you getting some glasses for driving and for concentrating. I was a bit annoyed. So basically I went to get my eyes tested because I have noticed they've gone a little bit blurry. The place where I got my eyes lasered, I mean, I paid like five grand to get my eyes lasered. It was not cheap. They include a 10 year warranty. So if my eyes deteriorate over the 10 years, I can get them lasered again for free, but they have to be worse than minus 0.75 in order for them to do it. So I went to get them tested to see if they were, and they're not. This is minus 0.5 and this is minus 0.25. So they're not quite bad enough yet to get them relasered, but I still have another five years. So if they get worse, then I can get them lasered. For the meantime, I have these glasses and guys, they showed me everything. They're like, here's our cheapest glasses. They were 39 pounds, which is what, $50. And then they were like all the way up to our most expensive that were like 300 pounds, like $400 or something. And I was like, obviously, cause they're just for reading. I'm not gonna buy an expensive pair of glasses. When I used to wear glasses, I used to buy expensive ones. And so I went straight to the, I took 30 seconds. I went straight to the cheapest shelf. There were six pairs of glasses on there. None of them were that nice. Picked one off and went, yeah, I'll have this. And then she was like, that was quick. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to like spend hours looking like I just want to get a pair and leave. So anyway, I went for these, which I mean, they're not awful, but they very much look like the type of glasses I used to wear like five years ago when I wore glasses. It's not necessarily my taste now, but they do the job. There's a wasp in here. Anyway, they do the job and uh, yeah. In the end though, it cost me 105 pounds because these were 39 pounds. They then upsold me anti-glare lenses, which I was like, fair enough, because I don't want it glaring up when I'm driving with like the lights in the cars. So I paid another 39 pounds on top of that. So that's what, 78. And then I had to pay 25 pounds for the eye test. So it came to 103 pounds, but never mind. I did not expect to be wearing glasses again, but here we are. But yeah, there's not much difference to be fair. I also have astigmatism, which is really annoying, which means my eyeballs are turning into a rugby ball shape instead of being round. <laughs> um, but alas, that's aging for you. Right, more washing has been done. I've reshot some branded content. Um, that's the size that you don't see. When people are like, oh, when you do work for brands, all you have to do is take a photo or take a video and put it online. No, you literally have to do that. Send it to your manager. They send it to an agency who then sends it to the client and the client goes into the agency. No, don't like that. And then they say to the manager, can Joel reshoot? Then my manager goes, Joel, you need to reshoot. So then I have to redo it. And then it goes through that chain multiple times until everyone is happy. So it takes a long time. Anyway, I've just made a lovely lunch. Three scrambled eggs, half an avocado, and five bacon, no, four bacon medallions. Everyone was horrified in my last video that I had ketchup with pizza, and I've, I've never been more shocked in my life. I thought that was normal. I thought people eat pizza with ketchup, ketchup with pizza all the time. Apparently not. Hi guys, good morning. I'm in London this morning. I have a meeting with my manager at 10.30. Uh, I love coming into London in the mornings. I usually come in the afternoons, so it feels very good. It feels like I'm a regular commuter, even though it's like 10 a.m. So I feel like most commuters get their commute done at 7 a.m. But, oh well. This is actually my fourth time in central London in the last seven days, which is unheard of for me now. And I'm coming in tomorrow as well, so that'll make it five. I used to do this before Ava, but since getting Ava in 2019, I, I come in maybe once a week. But anyway, I was in this weekend because I was celebrating my birthday. Me, Keegan, and my parents went for afternoon tea. It was lovely. I've got some clips and things, so I'll pop them in here. Before heading for afternoon tea, we actually had a little walk around St. James's Park near Buckingham Palace, and it was packed full of people there to lay flowers and stuff and pay their respects. And then we arrived at the Corinthia Hotel and had the best afternoon tea. It was so delicious. We had loads of sandwiches, scones, cakes. I even had a dessert trolley full of all the cakes, which I've never seen before. Um, but yeah, it was delicious. I know. 
today is a work visit, so we're just going to discuss my social media, my career, deals coming up, potential new deals, just basically everything to do with my social media, which is nice because it makes me feel a bit more like there's someone there helping me with it rather than it just being me. There's some more there. There's a lot of police here at the moment because technically we're still in the, the nation's still in a period of mourning for the Queen passing. Um, so her funeral is not until Monday and it's currently Wednesday. So yeah, there's loads of police out. There's still lots of people at the palace and the surrounding area leaving flowers and tributes and things. Um, so I'm going to avoid that area of town. I've already been there. Um, with my family at the weekend, I'm gonna avoid that part of town. More police. <laughs> this is one of my favorite antique bookshops. Uh, it's not open at the moment, otherwise I'd, well, and I don't have time, but I would go in, look at some of these books. So lovely. Anyway, Joel, you do not need more antique books in a cost of living crisis. I'm gonna have to slow down. You guys know how sweaty I get. <laughs> it's not even that warm today, but because I've been power walking, because I think I'm running a little bit late, I've got four minutes to get there. I'm, uh, yeah, a bit sweaty. And you know what happens when you stop, you just get a surge of heat. So, yeah, I'm just gonna slow it down a bit. Ooh, see, I'm late and I'm already stopping to look at Harry Potter books. <gasps> Tales of Beedle the Bard. Oh my gosh. Hi Meg, sorry I'm sweaty and late. I was just looking at Harry Potter books. I'm ridiculous. Oh my gosh, Creme is an amazing cookie shop. I had, I've never seen it in person before. I'm gonna go there after the meeting. So this is Meg, hello. Uh, we've just had a nice meeting. We've literally wolfed the croissants and coffee. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say hi, because I'm sure everyone will be like, why haven't you introduced us? Yeah. They get offended if I don't introduce oh. people to them, so. Yeah. <laughs> the meeting went really well. It's always so nice to see Meg and my other manager, Kat, is not there today. She's on holiday, so um, I will see her next time. But um, yeah, we had a good long, what is it? About an hour and a half meeting. Um, that went really quickly though. We discussed lots of different things. I also was discussing a little project I would quite like to start. Um, so they're gonna help me with that and get some info so that I know how I could potentially make it happen. Good times, I'm just gonna go to the gym now before heading home to walk over and be at home for this evening. off all these rows. I had to ask for permission to come down here. I was like, I'm going to the gym. And he laughed and I went, what? And he went, you're a bodybuilder. I was like, no, I'm not. I just want to go to the gym. Right guys, I'm babysitting today. Uh, well, this evening. Uh, I'm babysitting Rodney. Hello, Rodney. So Rodney is Lucy's boyfriend's dog and he is a whippet and they love playing. He bites Ava's ears. Sometimes he puts his whole mouth around Ava's nose, which you might have just seen. Um, they do not stop playing. So I think it's time to feed them. Guys, I feel a bit unsettled and I feel like I need to get it off my chest. There's three things that have made me feel unsettled. So basically, I've been in London all day today. I have been, uh, I walked over early this morning, then I went to meet my friend Luke, well, a new friend, he was an internet friend, he's a YouTuber. Damn it, I forgot to ask him how you say his surname. Anyway, he's a YouTuber and we're very similar, we make very similar content. Um, I'll flash him up on screen here. Um, so now we're real life friends, which has been great. And then I saw my friend Margot for a little catch up and I was leaving London, walking back to the station at 5 p.m. when my boyfriend, Keegan, texted me and I'm supposed to be going to his tomorrow. I'm getting the train to his tomorrow morning. And he was like, um, what are you doing this evening? And I was like, nothing. And he was like, do you think you'd be able to come up tonight instead? And so I looked at changing my train ticket. So I've changed it and I was like, yeah, I'll get on the 8.30 train. So I rushed all the way back home. At the same time, I was speaking with someone on Olio, which is like a free thing app where you can give away and, and get free things. I saw these amazing chairs, which I just need to show you. So I saw these, which are in need of renovation. And I just thought, 
yeah, I'll have them. So I'm going to pick those up. But as an introvert, that stresses me out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to talk to someone. I've got to find their house. I've got to knock on their door. I've got to say, hi, I'm here for the free chairs. And it's just, any introverts will get it. You'll understand. So that's stressing me out. Um, and then the third thing, some, as I was just leaving the house and I've had to come back inside, I'm going to talk quietly because the door's open. Um, a man, a very strange man who spoke so slowly and had a strange accent, um, knocked on the door and was like, I've been hired by, he spoke like this slowly and was like, do you own this house? And I was like, yeah. Um, and he was like, well, I've been hired by next door's dad to cut the bushes in your garden. And he was like, I've been told to cut them six foot. Me not thinking what six foot means, I think those bushes are probably like 11 feet tall. Um, so I was like, yeah, yeah, cut them. And I was busy, so I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. He was like, are you sure that's fine? I was like, yeah, that's fine. And he was like, can I cut them on this side as well? And I was like, yeah, if you need to, that's fine. I did think maybe he's scamming me in terms of will he make me pay for it? So I was trying to make it clear, like, if you need to come on this side, you can, but it's nothing to do with me. If you need to cut them, cut them. Anyway, and then I thought I'd check and I was like, hang on, how tall six foot? And he went and stood next to the bush and was like, like, my height. And I was like, no, no way. I was like, no. The bushes are like double that height. I was like, no, you can't. He was like, wait, I can't. And I was like, no, you can't. And he was like, I'll tell next door then. And I was like, yeah, tell them that I'm saying no, you can't cut them that short. And then he just walked off slowly and I'm like, what's going on? Has he actually been employed by my neighbor or is he like a scam artist? And would he have charged me if he'd done it? Or is he just crazy? Cause he was speaking really slowly and very odd. Um, so I don't really know. Many of you will say, go and ask your neighbour, but I've never spoken to them and I'm embarrassed. Um, so yeah, those three things have unsettled me, but I need to go get the chairs. There we go. They're in the car. Fantastic. I'm actually going away now. I'm actually getting the train to Keegan's house tonight. I was supposed to be going tomorrow morning. So I'm going to take this chair inside. I've left the other one in the car because I don't want to clutter up my house while I'm gone. And I figured I could leave them in the car maybe, but here it is. So basically I panicked. I panicked that if I left both chairs in the car, someone might break in and get them. Then part of me is like, who wants two old chairs, Joel? But then you're like, you never know. So I was like, well, I'll bring the nicer one in and the one that's broken can stay in there. Basically, I'm so excited to renovate this. I'm going to strip all of the varnish. This is the first studded chair that I'm ever gonna do. So I'm gonna look into how to remove the studs, um, re-upholster it and everything, and then put new studs in. It's just gonna be lovely. But anyway, so that's gonna wait in here. Hello, Ava, you've been inside all day. We're about to go up north now. You're gonna get a train with me. Anyway, so that's that. That'll be my next project. I don't know when I'll get around to doing that, but they were free, so I was like, I need to get them quickly. Um, I'm just gonna have a little bit of dinner now. Uh, I'm halfway through packing my bags, and then I need to leave in an hour to get back into central London, get on the 8.30 train. I won't get up north to Keegan's, well, get to Keegan's nearest station at 10.40, and then it's a half an hour journey from his, where he'll pick me up. So we won't get home till gone 11, but it's worth it to have an extra night with my boyfriend. Right, I'm all ready to go. Massive backpack, small backpack, and I've managed to get everything in there. Luckily, Ava has had her stuff up there for a long time. Um, she's got her own crate up there, her own bed, her own bowl, her own food, her own drink. Well, obviously drinks is water. So luckily, all I need to take of Ava's is her lead, and I've also brought some water for her and treats for the train. Are you excited? You're gonna see Fen. I've had some confusion on, uh, so yesterday, I no, the day before yesterday, I released my first public video with my boyfriend on this channel. I saw some comments talking about Finn, but um, I think it's because Fen is an odd name and people have assumed that they've misheard and that it's F-I-N, but it's not, it's F-E-N. I'll let Keegan explain in a video why he called him Fen. But yeah, it reminds me of Fenrir Greyback from um, Harry Potter. Good girl, we made it guys. So loud. Anyway, we've made it. We actually made it for the 8 p.m. train, so I tried to change my ticket last minute and it wouldn't accept my card because I think I was changing it 15 minutes before the train was going, so annoyingly, I could have gotten there half an hour earlier, but alas, we've made it. Two hour train journey, so I've got a John Lear video going live tonight, so I need to finish off the title, the thumbnail, everything, so that's my job for this journey. I've got Ava some snacks in here. 
So I'll give you some for being good. Hey guys, so it's Monday the 19th of September, which for most people in the world will know and remember as the day of Queen Elizabeth's funeral, which as you can hear, I have on in the background. But it's also my Nan's birthday. It would have been my Nan's birthday today. Um, I think it would have been her 83rd or 84th birthday. And to us, she was our queen. We used to, every Christmas, we would film her doing her very own queen speech and I would edit together the beginning part of all the, the brass bands and everything and then flash to her queen's message. And I know she would be watching the queen's funeral today if if she was still alive. So yeah, it feels like a bit of a poignant day today for those two reasons. Um, but as you can see, I'm at Keegan's house. I'm not at my house and I haven't even got ready. It's uh, it's just gone noon. We've just had the two or three minutes silence for the queen. Um, and I'm actually editing a video right now. I'm sort of watching the funeral and editing. Keegan was watching with me earlier, but he's also had to nip up to the office to go and do a bit of work. But yeah, that's the thing when you're self-employed, you don't get a day off. Everyone in the UK today pretty much has the day off, um, but being self-employed, I don't really get the days off. Um, oh, they're singing the national anthem. It's interesting that they, I thought they were going to sing God Save the Queen because it's the Queen's funeral, but they seem to have sung God Save the King, even though it's the Queen's funeral. Anyway, I'm sure I'm really interested to see what the viewing figures might be for the Queen's funeral, because uh, I'm pretty sure everyone around the world is, is watching. Right, we're at the train station now, nice and early. Do you know what, when we set off from Keegan's house, it did say that I was gonna be two minutes early. Like, it was gonna be two minutes until the train arrived. And now I've got here about 15 minutes early because the roads are completely empty because of it being a bank holiday. So that was good. I've made it with plenty of time. But it's a whirlwind trip. Every trip I've done, even when I've been up here, I've spent like 10 days up here before, seven days, five days, whatever it is, it always goes past so quickly. Um, but anyway, I've only got three days back in London, as I've already told you, and then I'm back up here again. So, life of a nomad. This is why I said I would never do long distance. <laughs> Good girl. Well, there's a train coming. I don't think this one's ours. What's that? Ava. Got plenty of room. That's it. No, Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from you and I'll reply to as many of the comments as possible. I'm just sat by the fire because it's so cold in England at the moment. Also, another reminder, if you would like to become a VIP member on this channel and get extra content from me every month, then click join next to subscribe and you can get all the options there. And don't forget, I'm on Cameo as well. So if you want a personalized video message for yourself or for anyone else that might watch my channel, um, then I'm on Cameo. The link will be down below as well. But anyway, enough with the notices. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. On to October. Bye.